Hey everybody, Stefan here at NAM17 at the Cattle and Bread booth together with the mighty Howard G. I don't know, I'm mighty, but <laughs> Designer of these lovely creations right here. And uh, let me start out with by saying I have the Bell Epoch myself and it is amazing. Well, thank you for saying and that. And you have just upgraded it big time, haven't you? I, uh, I went there, yeah. I you, did go you there. went all the way. I went all the way. Yeah, the original Bell, we're, we're really proud of it still, but we are going for you know, we want to be small, compact, and and uh, all that stuff, and it works great for that. But er, uh, earlier, uh, you know, 2016, the summer, I'm like, I want to take us all the way, because I'm a big fan of the Echoplex and the EP3. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, many players are. Yeah. So, um, you know, Andy Summers stopped by yesterday. I showed it to him, and he's like, Andy Summers. Yeah. Oh, and awesome. he goes. Well, someone finally did it. When can I get one? So for me, that's like, you know, beautiful. So what I did was with the Bell, Belly Puck Deluxe, I tried to make it as exact to the 1970s EP3 as possible. So so down to spec. All the, the, the parts, the circuit is identical. Wow. To the, including the type of capacitors and stuff like that. That is stunning. Now. Obviously, there's no tape in here, no. so everything is identical, except there's no record head, there's no playback head. No. Um, but there is. Uh, let me show you this. I don't even see. It. I don't even see it. But you know, this is basically the Echoplex diagram. Yep. And there's a preamp. Everyone talks about the preamp, right? Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of boosters in the preamp. Where a lot of the magic happens. Right. So you gotta start with that. And a lot of people like make end there when they make a booster pedal, right? But there's more to Echoplex than just a preamp. There is uh, also a record preamp, and there's also a playback preamp, and really? they're and yes, and they're made out of transistors, and they they got you know it's not just a little chip, it's a bunch of parts, old school technology, yeah. and that's important to the overall sound. So now I did get the preamp, now I did get the mixer, I also did the record amp and the record levels the same way, and uh, the playback amp and the way the feedback loop is analog. The only thing that's not here is the tape. Yeah. Everything else, if you compare it to an Echoplex, a vintage Echoplex, exactly, including the voltage. One to one. Yeah, one to one. So an Echoplex, uh, the preamps ran on 22 volts. And this runs on 22 volts as well. But, however, I didn't want the hassle of a special adapter. No. So you just plug regular nine volts into it and inside it converts it to the 22 volts. Um, so you get you get a bigger sound, you get more headroom, you get that nice, rich uh, 70 sound when you do that. And um, so it's I want it to be as convenient as possible, but to get to authentic sound. And uh, other than that, it's uh, just like the Echoplex. But then we went further, and I you have expression pedal control over stuff. Yeah. So you can control the delay time, you can control the volume, uh, you can control, I have a filter uh, patch in there where you can actually have the repeats go into a filter. Okay. Uh, even a rotary speaker, you can change the speed of the rotary, and that's on the repeats. So I kind of like, here's the Echoplex, I got the OG sound, now can I expand it further? And still keep it convenient and compact and easy to use. Yeah. In a nutshell, that's what I did there. Vintage Echoplex without the tape. It sounds like the, the best thing ever. Can we hear it? It's so, let's let settle it in a box. That's perfect. Yeah, right. So I'm glad you mentioned that because you know the way people use Echoplex is it's like an instrument, right? You're not just it's not just a delay thing. No. You're going you're doing that and you're making your hand motions and stuff like that. And so I try to honor that tradition of it by adding a palette of things you can do when you're performing. So you can use the uh, expression pedal yeah. like I did. 
there's a special button so you can just go, uh, you know, full repeats and oscillate. Instant self oscillate. And then if you do that, it's like the slider, so you know. So, um, oh, that is so cool. Just opens up the palette, you know, yeah, uh, totally. and it's a lot of attitude. Um, once I got that, so then we have um, six different programs uh, that where the tape would be. Yeah. So now we can do like other things now. So um, I'll just show you. We won't go through all the tape. I'll show you one. Now I'm going to have the expression pedal um, assigned to the filter sweep. Yeah. It's on the repeats only. And I'll just do it. I'll show you here. I did that to show you, yeah. yeah. So it's on the repeats, so it's kind of like a new thing, you know, to actually wall the repeats. Um, I really like in the long delays, you get the kind of sweeping filter yeah. synth kind of a thing. Yeah, great for that, like, modern psychedelic style going yeah, on. Yeah, it's like you can work it while you play, so yeah. it just makes it... Uh, I, my goal was to try to make it like a musical instrument and not so much like a processor. S sounds like you achieved that pretty well. Uh, where it's something that's going to take you somewhere new every time you play it, yeah. um, and give you control where you can just do things, and um, you know, a lot of fun. And, yeah. So yeah, there's more I can tell you, but uh, in a nutshell, yeah. In a nutshell, it's awesome. I can see right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, you want to talk about some of the other ones? Um, you, can do, you can do that. You can go to the Formula 55 here. And uh, yeah, you already had a Formula 55 out before, right? Formula 5. Formula 5, yes. Yeah, now Formula 55, so that's 50 louder. All right. <laughs> it's the next generation. I start from the ground up, start from scratch. Because we did the Formula 5, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Yeah. And I've been designing this whole time. The way I say it, it's like I've been designing pedals for the entire Obama administration. Yeah. So two terms of designing pedals. I learned some stuff along the way, and so I wanted to take that tweet uh, amp idea again and, and revisit it. Yeah. So I wanted to, you know, more range of gain from clean to dirty, just a better sound, more output, and a um, uh, little bit more control. So you know, now you've been hearing it the entire time, but I'll. I'll uh, so to tonally, how does it compare to the Formula Five? Is it a completely different circuit or? It's it's I redid it from scratch, yeah. so it's completely different from that standpoint. But it is a 5e3 Tweed Deluxe based pedal. Yeah. So uh, compared to the original one, I went even more accurate with the the preamp circuitry. So if you look at the uh, Tweed Deluxe, has two knobs, right? Yeah. Tone and volume, and there's tone and volume on the pedal, and they're exactly part for part, exactly like the Tweed Deluxe. And then we're using JFET instead of the tubes, and I basically tune those as close as I could to get that the, the, the response right. So I would say we just went more refined, took it further, and um, then I did some stuff with the output circuitry that we didn't have in the original, that gives a better drive to the amp, more output, like you can you can get a cleaner sound and yet get a lot of boost out of it. And plus, there's a button now that you can go high uh, gain or low gain. Low gain is like a vintage Tweed 12AY7, let's say. Yeah. Let's say he popped in a 12AX7 instead. So that's kind of like hitting the button. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, sh should we just quickly hear it? Yeah, let's quickly hear it.
That sounds beautiful. Yeah, it's getting that that big, thick, low yeah, end. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I can show you one more thing. So like we like uh, that fat tree sound. It's really uh, thick, and it sounds like if you hit hard, it would flub out, you know. Yeah. But I got it so it could be thick when you play it soft. When you hit it hard, it will actually tighten up. Cool. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a thing there. And then the last one is the, the preamp buffer. Pre, yeah. So the Epoch Pre um, is a dedicated preamp buffer pedal. Yep. It is sort of the brother or the sibling of the Epoch Deluxe. So it's basically the preamp from this one turned into a standalone pedal? Yeah, so um, it's got the same 22 volt. You, you plug 9 volts in, you get 22 volts out. Um, but then we take, on this one I have basically, you know, the, to preamp tune like an EP3. On this one, I expanded it so you can actually use it to boost. Cause you know the original Equiplex, it didn't boost. Oh. It made it warmer yeah. and sweeter and creamier and it felt like a boost a little bit, but it, it was just more, uh, uh, you know, pretty even unity. But um, when you examine the circuit, there was actually a lot of gain there that wasn't used. Because their goal is just to make a driver's circuit. But if you look at the, the preamp of the Echoplex, uh, you go, oh, I can do this and get more gain out of it. I can do this, get more gain out. So I did those things so you can actually use it to boost with all still all the headroom yep. and not dirty, it's clean and big and warm. Um, also, the original Echoplex, there's two different versions of it. The first 400, had a different preamp voicing than the later ones. Uh, the early one had more of a like upper mid-range bite to it, and a little bit tighter in the low end. Uh, the later one's a little bit more broad and creamy sounding. So there's a toggle switch button that you can select early spec or later spec. And you really go all in when you do this, huh? I, you know, why bother? <laughs> Otherwise, you know. Uh, so I'll tell one more story. Uh, if you look at the vintage Echoplex and you look at the block diagram, and you see the mixer, it's a passive mixer, and I, which is reproduced here. It's also reproduced here. There's a mixer here, but there's no wet signal. So, why would you do that? Well, because it affects the, the sound. It's part of the magic, you know, that warm sound. The problem is, it's got a pretty high output impedance, which can load your amp down if you have long cables or more pedals. But that is part of the original sound. But I go, well, people who run more pedals these days, they need a little more clarity. So there's actually a switchable output buffer that's also 22 volts, and you can, and you can switch on after the preamp, and it will take that impedance and change it to low output impedance, and then your amp, you get more detail, you know, even bigger sound. And if you bypass the preamp, the buffer, you can still have the buffer on, so you can use the buffer for all your rest of your pedal board. Um, and then we go into uh, a couple of other options, boosting options. There's a bias control, we set at minimum, and that's the EP3. Unity gain, and um, you know, basically the original thing. And then you turn the bias up, and you'll get louder and louder and louder. Same tone, but just louder. And then there's a preset boost. There's a control, you can set it, and then you hit the foot switch, and boom, when you want that one, when you want that one part to really jump out, you have it available. Um, you can use it anywhere in your pedal board, but the, the most awesome use of it is to put it at the end of the pedal board. And I like to think of it as like the mastering plugin. Yeah. So you record some tracks and you listen to the rough tracks, right? All right, okay, whatever. Put on a mastering limit on the master fader. Oh, okay, now it sounds better. Everything's yeah. more cohesive. Bump the volume up a little bit and it makes the band feel like one unit now. So, the Epoch Pre, if you want at the end, does that for your entire pedal board. You can use whatever pedals you want. So that and is it'll... the final, final touch of magic that brings it all together. Yeah, and I was just talking to one of our friends, he runs studio and he likes to use pedals for um, uh, studio work. And I went through with him and he's like, that is gonna be so useful, you know. So, 
you can use it in the studio, but as a guitar player, it's got two outputs. So, and that's how I'm using Jay, but uh, both amps driven from that. Uh, it's two outputs. And um, you can boost with it. You can just make it sound warmer. You can buffer with it. You can also turn the entire pedal board down. And, uh, you know, like if you have a pedal board, in order to get the sound right, you have to have all the fuzzes pretty loud. Yeah. And it might be too loud for the situation, or it might hit your amp too hard. Or maybe you just want to, you're, you're practicing at home, you just want to jam, but you don't want to like be loud. So you can actually use the balance control, the volume control on, on it to turn the whole pedal board down and not lose anything. It'll still have That's that, brilliant. You'll still have that big sound. Yeah. And it, like if you run a volume pedal at the end of your pedal board, you turn it down, it's like no fun. No. Right? It just sounds deflated. Yeah, you lose some high end and yeah. And yeah. So this uh, you can you can you can boost it, you can even turn it down. Um, which was really cool when I discovered that use of it. It's like, oh, you know, because we, we spend a lot of time at home just practicing, and, and, we, and we, maybe you don't want to blow your head out, you know? Wow. But, so at home you can do that, but on stage, you can get as big as you want. So um, I'm finding it's like, oh, I'm, it becomes your best friend on your pedal board, so. That is killer, Howard. Thank you so much for showing us these. Uh, I'm thoroughly impressed by the tones. I'm probably even more impressed by how much work and love you poured into this. Oh. You really went all out, so kudos. Well, you know, I'm just a guitar player too, and tone seeker like a lot of you folks, so yeah. I just happened to end up with a job where I I can't complain about the pedal now because I'm the one doing it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's perfect. Thank you so much right for on. doing this. Thank you. Thank you.